I am terrified to start at my new school. My first day of high school. I give myself the greatest pep talk of all time. You got this, Shane. It's gonna be great, you're gonna make new friends, have tons of fun, totally fit, it's gonna be awesome, incredible. All right, Shane, you can do this. Just walk through those doors and handle Zach Efron, feel Zach Efron, be Zach Efron. I take my first step into my first day of freshman year, also known as one of the worst days of my entire life. The moment the lunch bell rang, I stepped out of class and the hallway was instantly filled with all these circles, all these groups, people who have probably known each other for months, years. I am surrounded by 1,500 students and I feel completely alone. So, what do I do being the, the tough, confident kid that I am? I puff out my chest, I pull out my phone to social media. Shit. It is way easier to make friends online. Within three days, I have 137 people on my friend list. This is awesome! But inside, I feel hopeless and completely alone. Maybe if I was at a different school, life wouldn't suck so much. I finally tell my mom how I'm feeling, and she encourages me to see my school counselor. Says he'll be able to help me adjust, whatever that means. The only reason I agree to see him is to try and transfer to a better school, a place I'll fit in and have friends be happy. So the next day I walk into his office. Mr. Conte, I hate it here. This is the wrong school for me. Please help me transfer anywhere else would be better than here. Mr. Conte just looks at me, crosses his leg, and starts nodding a lot. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. All right, Shane, here's what we're gonna do. I don't really know you, son, so why don't you begin by telling me about yourself? What do you like to do? What are some of your hobbies? Maybe Mr. Conte, AKA Dumbledore, is asking me these questions so we can learn more about me, so we can sort me into the perfect school. <laughs> that magical brain moment leads to this rush of uncontrollable excitement. Suddenly, I'm listing off every hobby, every interest I can think of, and Mr. Conti is taking all these notes. When I'm done, he hands me the piece of paper he's been scribbling on and starts pointing out all these names. Not names of schools, names of students? Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm, all right, Shane. Here's what we're gonna do. This here is the producer of the school radio team. She's the head of this club, he's the president of this, she's the president of FBLA, go talk to these people. Go sign up for at least five different clubs or councils or teams and then come back and see me in a week. I feel like the hard part is over. At this point, I'm so desperate, I'm willing to do anything to get that transfer. The second I leave his office, I sign up, I show up at the first club that same day after school, get to the classroom door, reach out to open it, but my hand doesn't turn. And suddenly, I realize my whole body is shaking. I'm desperate, determined. But even so, the idea of walking into this classroom is suddenly terrifying. I'm suddenly afraid of being judged, of not being accepted, of not having anyone sit next to me, of people laughing at me because I'm not cool enough, whatever that means. I am completely washed over with fear standing outside that door. My mouth is dry, the nausea. What if they ask me stuff? My heart starts racing, I can feel it beating in my head. You would have thought I was about to jump out of an airplane. All I was doing was walking into a classroom with seven people in it. Fear has the power to either shut you down or shoot you forward. That's what I tapped into. Now, feeling nervous about something it means that thing is important to you. It, it means you care. I was more than nervous to walk into that room of students I didn't know. I pushed through the awkwardness because I had a goal in mind, a goal of feeling different, of feeling less crappy. Pushing through the fear and stepping into this room means I am one step closer to that transfer. I have to do it. I use every ounce of strength to reach out for that door and open it. The first time you do anything is the most difficult. Walking into that first club, ridiculously hard. As soon as I push through the fear the first time, the fear of being rejected and alone, as soon as I push through all of that, everything started to shift. I started to change my story. 
pretty soon my story was about what I'm gonna play tomorrow morning on the school radio, what I have to bring to Thursday's club meeting, the set I'm helping build for the drama production hold up. Wasn't I supposed to go back and see Mr. Conte about that transfer I wanted like seven million years ago? It had been two weeks. Two weeks. I realized the only reason I felt like an outsider before was because I was acting like one. I wanted to feel happy. I wanted to feel connected. I wanted to feel less invisible. And I thought the answers were out there, but really, I just had to make different choices. And there's this huge shift. I'm smiling, talking to people in the halls because I've made friends. The more I get involved in the community, the more I feel like I'm really part of one. Today, Count Me In is an international organization that inspires students everywhere to connect with themselves and their community in a meaningful way. Over the last decade, Count Me In has impacted 10 million students in 104 countries. And this last year, Forbes magazine helped us celebrate a new milestone. 100 million service hours pledged by our community. And it all started out of my high school locker. It's all about our choices. You have to start by asking yourself, how do I want to feel? Your life is only as good as the story you tell yourself.